Hi guys and uh, welcome to my uh, review for the Joy Audio VZ10. Um, this is the second product from Joy Audio and as, as we all know Joy Audio um, is uh, basically a company under the umbrella of the, the KZ Empire, let's put it that way. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Joy Audio, uh, uh, it is my understanding, was created to basically be the um, uh, the the company having the better products, having the, the high-end products of uh, KZ and CCA. Anyway, um, this is the box. Again, very much similar to the original box of the of the Shine, which was their first product, which was a OnePlus 2. This is now a OnePlus 4. Okay, you open it up. Inside, this is like so. Open it, bring some uh, paperwork here and so on. And then inside this box, we get this carrying case, which is very nice, kind of similar to the carrying cases that Duno offers. Only difference is the Duno ones are not shiny. The the, 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 the you know the finish. This one is they've got like a more matte finish. This is shiny, uh, and then the IEMs themselves came over there. This is the cable, which is the the that better cable that they sometimes offer on some of the models. Okay and then uh, the tips themselves over here as well the tips for some reason which i found actually curious they are all wide bore however having said that um, i've tried these kind of turbine turbine ones before and i, I really didn't like them and i actually thought uh, well in, in the in the ims that i used it didn't really do the ims just that and the same case actually also happened here with the vz10 um, not the tip i would recommend the white ones they're okay. I mean, they're not they're not bad, but they are a little bit too soft. Uh, so I ended up uh, not using the, the the stock tips, but used my my trusty KB Euro sevens. Uh, as for the cable, the cable is actually not bad. Uh, I've you know the cable is actually not a bad cable. I just um, got a, a better cable there just for the sake of well uh, using it myself. Not that I saw any real difference to be honest with you. Uh, anyway, that's the box. Nice presentation. Um, the the well the good thing is the price of this is basically the same price as the Shine. The Shine was um, seventy two dollars, I believe seventy two or seventy four dollars ninety nine. This is seventy nine dollars ninety nine. So for eighty dollars, this is uh, well uh, questionably the the cheapest, most well done. Let's put it that way. One plus four that you can currently get. Uh, there, there are other other one plus fours um, but in terms of uh, let's say a, a one plus four that offers a nice nice shell uh, although a little bit on the big side in an unusual shape which is not going to be you know a, a, a it's not going to be friendly to fit everybody's ears but it, I, I like the shape I like this boldness that uh, KZ has I have to admire them for being bold in the design you know the, the CXS and and um, the ZVX and I, I like it I, I have to say I, I like their 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 bold um, uh, uh, you know uh, attempts at making some stuff that actually looks uh, interesting let's put it that way um, anyway as I was saying the 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 fact that they offer a shell of this quality, you know, 3D printed uh, with all the ducts inside for the individuals, individual drivers, uh, talking about drivers, uh, it uses the, 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 the famous 7mm um, uh, 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 legendary driver, um, and then it uses a combination of... Uh, Excuse me. Of um, twenty nine six eighty nine for the um, for the uh, mids and um, uh, um, the fifty double o twenty four for the highs. So again, uh, um, BAs which are you know usual. Not not nothing. There's nothing special here. There's nothing uh, fancy. It's just very traditional um, BA is being used the driver we've seen the driver already in the shine we've seen the driver in the HM20 from CCA we know it's a good driver and it is a very competent seven millimeter driver uh, and then the other feature that the that the, the, the VZ has is these switches uh, okay much like the KZAS24 uh, the difference here of the switches is that while the main panel switch which is the one okay so if you have the IEM like this, this is the main panel switch, and then the one underneath, they call it the sub switch. 
okay on the main panel switch it's basically the same configuration of the four switches as is on the AS24 which means okay they are really tiny so you can't really see them too well but anyway what it what this means is that the first switch gives an overall boost of the sensitivity of 2 dBs and then the other switches 2, 3 and 4 give an increase of 1 dB uh, each for a total of 3 dBs in the base uh, base region okay and then underneath okay uh, the sub switch the switches uh, the first one gives a little boost on the medium or on the on the medium on the on the mids uh, and then the other three uh, switches give um, two three and four give again a 1 dB increase uh, in the upper uh, upper well, upper mid range and treble area okay where uh, this is different compared to the um, to the uh, AS24 is that the AS24 yes on the main on the main panel it was exactly the the, the, the same thing but then on the um, panel underneath the panel that that uh, they, they call the sub the sub switch panel or what, you know whatever um, they um, implemented a, a, a slightly different uh, setup the first two switches underneath um, were uh, one dB increments in the in the mids and then the three and four were two dB increments each on the highs. Uh, and I actually think that configuration uh, works better um, and in this particular case I think that configuration would have been a, 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 a wiser uh, configuration to use anyway um, the shell as I was saying it, it's beautifully built I actually think it's an absolutely stunning IEM to be honest kind of reminds me of the I believe it was called the BA-10 uh, uh, which had this similar design they've they've you know they've they've paid attention to making sure that, uh, that at least the corners are rounded and everything so that it's cool kind of not really bug you too much in terms of the fit but it is a big IM I mean this this is a huge IM when you consider that it's got uh, uh, you know uh, four BAs and a, and a dynamic driver inside there. it is a huge IM by comparison I mean that's this is a blessing too okay and you can see it, it, it kind of uh, pales the blessing two in terms of size and the blessing two is also a one plus four but anyway um in terms of of that of that aspect of the physical aspect of it it doesn't really bug me it fits me fine i mean i didn't really have an issue I've, i use the 07 tips which were the tips that really worked well the one thing i will i will say and i will recommend anybody that um, does get these is make sure that you can uh, really deep fit them and in that aspect I actually uh, feel a certain amount of, of pity that I actually couldn't have the 07s uh, but the, the blue color which are the medium sized tips fit me nicely well they fit but the thing is the, the shell uh, and, and the way that it's designed I, I cannot get them to stay uh, put as I would like if I just hold the IEM there um, in the position that it ideally should be at the sound that I got out of the VZ is incredible period end of story uh, that, that's all I'm gonna say uh, so I had to kind of accept uh, some of that um, loss of, of that extra gain that I got from the sound uh, and in detriment of uh, then having certain aspects of the VZ which are not the ideal but I'll get to that in a second when I get to the sound uh, and using I had to use the large ones which uh, what basically this means between one tip and the other is that by using the larger tips the IEM sits further out of my ear canal uh, that accentuates certain uh, uh, certain parts of the frequency uh, range especially the, the upper mids and the treble um, while with the smaller tip and being able to put it inside a little bit more of my ear canal those uh, frequencies were attenuated pushed up higher and it just made the vz10 sound absolutely incredible i mean even the bass gained from that which is not this im's forte the bass definitely not it's it's uh, it's uh, it's it's um, you know main point of attraction and it, and it was a pity to be honest it was a pity but anyway let's let's talk about what we want to talk and and position the the vz10 and and uh, give you my opinion about the vz10 um before i i i, I actually go into more detail i just want to show well tell you what i've got here uh, and then obviously that by telling you what i've got here that, that will help us uh, understand everything the main source i used was my uh, ra2 bfe um with the prime deck and i also used my kn uh, uh my kn uh, and m15 with my nx7 combo uh, i used these well 
these two with the amp and that they uh, and again I did that because because I the VZ is very much uh, sensitive to what source you use so tips definitely are something that you have to uh, play around with to make sure that you get the proper tip to if possible insert the IM as deep as, as it as it will be, uh, you know humanly go um, uh, and then uh, the, the, the source that you use will also help to, to, to extract and m the maximum performance out of it and, and kind of minimize the, 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 the small aspect which I think is really its only flaw to, to, be, to be honest. As I was saying, um, I've got the shine here. I thought it would be an interesting idea to have the shine. I've got here yeah, the, the KZZAR, um, which I thought as well would make sense. I've got the HM20, the CCA, which I think is an absolute beast of an IM. I still think that this IM never really got its deserved um, um, attention. It never did. Um, it, 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 seriously, uh, again, uh, this is, this is uh, my ears, what I listen to, the fact that I can deep fit it, but this IM is absolutely unreal and for the $60 that it costs roughly it's been very much uh, I think underappreciated uh, and over here I've got the latest from KZ uh, in terms of the the top of their uh, single DD the top of their BA unit so it's the DFI the switched version and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that just in a second the AS24 which I think is an absolute beast of an all BA IEM and then over here I've got just so that this doesn't you know become just a comparison with the KZs and so on. I've got here the EPZ K5 OnePlus 4 which I think is uh, in terms of the, 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 the more affordable OnePlus 4 is a very underrated IEM as well. You can currently get this for like about $110. So very very nice built IEM with a very nice sound. Trust me, very nice IEM. The, the Kara and the Blessing 2 obviously already in a different price bracket but I brought them out to to, bit, to also give you an idea of where this can stand up against these two. Obviously, I could have brought up the F45, you know, Performer 5. I could have brought a whole bunch of them. But I thought it would make sense, the Blessing 2, because a lot of people know what the Blessing 2 is about. And the Kara, because it's kind of one of the latest ones around. And it is and it is a very good IM. I thought about also bringing out the 41T, but I just, I, you know, let's not complicate things. Anyway, the Shine. The Shine was a, a, a valid attempt. I mean... It used one. It was a one plus two with the same dynamic driver, the switches as well to help tune the the sound. Um, the problem with the Shine was that, and the only setting that I think is really viable is the uh, rock and R&B setting, which is what with the, the the switch position is one zero zero one. Um, it it was not a bad sounding IM. I mean, let, let you know, let's let's be honest. It wasn't a bad sounding IM. I just feel that the Shine. Um, was perhaps, um, um, I'm not going to say rushed, but they, f I think KZ failed to, uh, how can I put this? Um, they have the HM20. The HM20 is phenomenal. Okay, it is phenomenal. And the fact that the HM20 is better than this shows me, or tells me at least, that they didn't 100% see uh, the, the or, or extract the full potential of this fine okay we've got seven BAs there plus the, the dynamic driver but it's the same dynamic driver and the BAs they're using are the 50024s and the and the 30019 so it's they it's not like they're using any fancy uh, BAs as well okay um and they just were able to make a tuning there on the HM20 which is absolutely perfect Harmonish, yes, but it sounds amazing. And I heard criticisms of people saying, "Oh, it's too bassy," and this and that. Well, it's a seven millimeter driver, so it's never going to be too bassy. But that it's got nice, deep, really good quality bass. Yes, it does. And and I, I even compared the bass to the to the Maestro Mini. You know, when I tested the Maestro Mini, and the Maestro Mini, yes, does ultimately have a little bit more in terms of quantity. Uh, but in terms of quality of the bass, I didn't see the Maestro Mini having anything that justifies it's $500 price tag that is so significantly better than the HM20. I honestly don't. And definitely not when it comes to mids and highs. The mids and highs of the of the HM20 are very well executed for an IEM of this price and they keep up very well with the Maestro Mini. So, I mean, with all respect to the people that like the Maestro Mini, uh, it is overpriced. 
it is an overpriced IEM. I, I haven't heard the other ones, the the the, the, the Maestro SE and then Garen, Garen Maestro, and I mean, I forget now the names of all of them. I haven't heard them, so I can't really uh, 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 give an opinion on them. But I have heard, and I heard for a long, long time, the Maestro Mini. And I tried everything to kind of say, no, okay, this is... And yes, the bass is very good, but it isn't... It isn't a wow factor. I, I even mentioned as well that the Legato had a better bass, not only in terms of quality, but also in terms of quantity than the Maestro Mini. But anyway, that's not a, we're not here about the Maestro. The Shine. And what that basically translated, what I was saying, was that the mids just came across, I don't know, in an awkward manner. The bass uh, sounded thin comparative, comparatively the, to the HN20. So it was a nice sounding IM, but it lacked that ultimate you know, push to re to really make it stand out as a OnePlus 2. Um, the ZAR, the only problem of the ZAR is it's too much bass. In terms of the mids and highs and how the mids and highs are executed, again, perfect. Harman, very much like the HM20. It's basically got the same configuration, just that the driver is the, is the legendary driver in 10 millimeters. It just had too much bass. If they had put a switch on this to just drop the bass by 3 dBs, even if it was a single switch, honestly, just a single switch, just to drop the the, the, the the bass by 3 dBs, I think this would have been a killer IEM, absolutely killer. If you had the ability to 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 uh, adjust the bass like you do on, on the DFI with this, this would have been a killer hybrid, a killer hybrid, honestly. Um, HM20, I've talked about it, so it's not pointing, you know, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. DFI. Um, you know, I've received some comments of people saying, "Oh, why? Uh, why do I prefer the DFI, the non mic, the the, the non uh, switch version over the switch versions?" Well, first of all, uh, in, the DFI in the switch version only has one setting which makes sense, which is the one 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 zero setting. The rest of the settings are way too lean, and by being way too lean, yes, they might be a little bit detailed. Extra, you know, we might extract a little bit extra detail, but what you extract of extra detail doesn't compensate the fact that the mid, the, the, the bass and the mids, the, the lower mids become too thin and then they detract uh, some some life. You know, it loses that that nice timbre. It, it just, the DFI in, in the other settings besides the one that I mentioned is the polar opposite of the ZAR. Uh, so, you know, in the sense that in the ZAR you've got very nice mids, very nice highs, but then crazy amount of bass which smothers the, the, that, that. And over here, you know, if you don't use that 1110 setting, which is the one that actually balances things out, then this thing just sounds way too thin. The, the mids and highs, yes, are amazing, but it sounds too thin. And, you know, because basically the driver that's in here is the same driver that's in there. Okay, the set, this is the same dynamic driver. So the, the quality of this dynamic driver is unquestionable. Okay, the, the, this legendary driver from KZ is a very good driver, um, the, you know, and, and it's nothing, nothing spa uh, uh, fancy. It's got a well-designed magnetic system, simple diaphragm, but it is a good driver. Uh, it, 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 it plays well, it, you know. And in the DFI, um, the reason why I prefer the, the non-switch version is that I get just a little bit more extra bass than what I do on this one, that for me personally, for me personally, makes it sound unbelievable because basically the mids and the highs remain you know more or less the same um but the the truth is i don't dislike the switch version uh, especially with the whiteboard tips like i have here and with a good deep insertion this thing is phenomenal phenomenal capable of trading blows with iams which are way more expensive way more expensive harman tune as well okay uh a as24 i had it uh, I, I tested this recently so I don't really need to say much. Uh, the best KZ in terms of all BA sets up to now, okay? Um, and in terms of, of its technical capabilities, phenomenal. Uh, in terms of the switches, I've got the switches set up in a way that I have all the bass basically being, being emphasized uh, because, again, that's how I feel that then everything just, you know, evens out nicely and, you know, uh, it sounds more, more coherent. I'm trying to see if I could show you yeah, the switch settings. See the bottom, the bottom panel, everything is off, and on the top panel, uh, top panel. Let's see if I can focus this. Uh, top panel, there. Top panel. Um, I use 
either the base switch on all the bases all the base switches on with the extra boost or sometimes i take the boost away it basically sounds the same uh, anyway as24 super technical it sounds really good i don't think that the ba timbre that is still present is in any way um uh, 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 a hindrance to, to the overall quality of the sound it sounds very organic very, i mean there are very very few songs that i would say the as24 uh, made me say okay this is just fine for the rest i was absolutely very satisfied with what i was getting out of the as24 it sounds phenomenal uh, definitely definitely one of the of the of the most uh, sensible all BA sets that you can buy currently, especially when you take into again the consideration of the price. But that's KZ for you. And then on this end, yeah, okay, a blessing too. I don't think I need to really say much. If you want detail, quality mids, uh, you know, amazing bass, just the right quantity, uh, phenomenal sound, phenomenal. Personally, I think that the blessing is better than the dusk version, but hey, that's me, you know. Uh, um, uh, that's just me, okay. Um, the Kara, I think, is an absolute beast of an IEM. Um, what would I have liked a little bit better uh, there? Maybe just, maybe just a little bit extra more details. But the mids are f very, very good. Um, the bass, uh, I would have liked it to perhaps have a better quality driver just for that bass that is there, which is of high quality, just to be that little extra more, okay. But again. This is priced at about $165, so I guess all these things taken into consideration are the reason why they didn't offer something which is uh, uh, what it could be. The, the, the basic uh, formula there is very good, and, and it sounds amazing, and it's good for the price. Obviously, there's margin for improvement. And the EPZ, the K5, you know, for $110, you'll be very hard-pressed to find another uh, another IM, one plus 4, that sounds nice. It's got a nice full bass, especially the, with you know a bit of a mid bass emphasis. It's got an eight millimeter driver, which is very competent. Um, and then when I actually show you the graphs, you'll be surprised. And in terms of the mids and the highs, it at lowered volumes, it sounds a little bit like dull, a little bit you know. But when you start pushing the volume, it scales really well and it opens up you know really really well. It is a very very nice uh, IM. I thought about also having yeah the, the as I was mentioning earlier the, the sound drive the SR5, but I, I wanted to try and keep things as close as possible to to in terms of price to the VZ and only having these two which are you know more expensive to kind of have a comparison for the VZ. Um, and that's it. Now the sound of the of the of the, of the VZ. What is it like? Well, the bass is adequate. Um, when you compare the bass, uh, for example, with the bass uh, of the AS24, uh, what you do notice is that in in, in certain songs, and, uh, and and one of the songs, for example, will be. Uh, <clears throat> from Dust to Door, from George Duke, you notice that the fact that it's a DD just gives that little extra warmth, that little extra thickness to the bass, you know, that the, the AS makes it a little bit colder. This very high quality bass there, very good quantity, it's just a little bit colder than here. So that's the biggest difference, really, is that you notice that the bass is a typical DD bass, well executed, and it adds that little extra warmth that a, a, an OBA set cannot have. As compared to the bass of the of the of the DFI, the DFI has got better bass. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a ten millimeter driver, so it doesn't have to work as hard to to give the bass that the, the VZ does. Um, I HM20, I think it's got a better bass than the the the, the VZ. The, the ZAR bass monster, so it's not even a question of better, it's just loads of bass there. And the, the Shine, no, the Shine, uh, although they're using the same driver here, that driver has been tuned much, much, much better. If the Shine had the bass of, 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 the, of the VZ, the Shine would have had a completely different uh, <coughs> success. Completely different success, excuse me about that. So, the bass, it's adequate, it's, it's, it's got a nice tonality, nice timbre. Um, it, it's not gonna rumble and blow you away and no, no but it's it's got a nice sound to it it's very tonally correct uh, Mary is very nice into the mid there, 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 there's the, the bleed that exists is minimal to non-existent so there's not really an issue there and it complements the highs uh, the highs it complements the mids uh, um, very nicely except for the upper mids all right but I'll, I'll get to that in a second um 
compared to 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 these um you notice that there's a, 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 a less definitely less slam than the than the epz the ep's got it's got way more slam um in terms of overall depth or overall quality uh the vz is slightly better but the one that's got the most in, the more engaging bass is definitely the epz uh, as for the the kara um, no comparison the base of the kara is superior uh, qual quality quantity everything uh, as for the blessing surprisingly surprisingly with the blessing i was you know because the blessing is no bass monster in itself and i was actually quite surprised at how well it kept up with the with the base of the blessing in in, in more than one occasion so I think that's really a good a good point for it. Mids. The mids are well done. The problem is not really the mids. And uh, it's, you know, they've they've done, uh, let me just rewind you a little bit. They've done basically Harmon tunes on these three, okay? Different uh, levels of that Harmon tune with different levels of bass and mids and how the bass and the mids are matched. And over here, they have gone... Uh, they've pushed the mids the most as compared to these two and at the same time that makes the bass sound l leaner or, 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 or well there actually is less bass than these two okay um, so it, it skews things in a way that it makes it to, uh, kind of come across as a leaner sounding harmon as opposed to these two okay these two sound um, way more uh, uh, warmer sounding harmons okay more at least personally and for my music uh, way more satisfying these two uh, especially if I'm look, uh, listening to something which is, is more engaging more 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 you know, like some so if I'm listening to some EDM def definitely these two will be at home there while this one it will do it it will be fun but it won't it's not it's not what it was supposed to be tuned and and um, and it's not what it was supposed to be doing well let me put it that way <clears throat> the issue here with this is that the upper mids, especially that area there, four, five, six k, it's just been. Um, and when I show you the graph, you'll understand. So they've done a rise, they've peaked, they've dropped it slightly, then another peak, they dropped it again, and that makes that area there, four, five, six, seven k, just come across too forward. And depending on how then you play with your volume, depending on what source you're using, depending on what tips you have, depending on the insertion depth of the actual IEM, the results will be very uh, diversified. Uh, if I was able to have the tips that I wanted, that would have been ideal because, uh, you know, it, it would be perfect. It would sound just like I like. The bass even gained uh, more presence that way. Because I had to use the larger tips, um, there are certain songs that, like Up and Up from Jeff Ryan, it, 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 it's strong. It's, it, it doesn't reach that point where, you know, it's, it's buggy me or anything, and, then they, and there's no that, uh, sh -sh -sh, you know, there, there's no sibilance, or anything, but it's, it's just, for me, just overly strong. And, it was a, and it's really a pity, honestly. It's, it's really a pity, because that's really the only area where I think that they could have just spent a little bit, a little bit extra time just adjusting it ever so slightly. Or maybe then, maybe, who knows, maybe with the switches uh, adjusted in a manner that, um, it, you know, it, it could have been better. Let me put it that way. I'm actually using the settings that I'm using here. I'm actually giving it a, um, a little bit of a treble boost um, because without that treble boost i'm giving it two dbs of treble boost without that boost um it's it's it sounds like it's lost a little bit of that uh, ba capability of you know being resolving and details and everything and with that extra little boost it gives me that extra little bit that i want because that's you know let, let's not forget one thing you, you, a single dd for the most is not going to be the most technically capable it's got that nice BA, uh, it's got that nice DD timbre, that nice tonality, that nice warmth, but a BA set by, by the, is the complete opposite. It will be very technical, very capable when it comes to, you know, detailed retrieval and all those things, the twinklies and the sparklies, like I say, but it will lack some of that warmth unless it's been very well tuned in the bass. And a hybrid is the, is the happy medium, the happy, the, it's the, 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 the one that gives you the best of both worlds. And over here, they, they almost got it right. You know, they almost got it right. I mean, and, and, and this is not me being critical, or it's just 
and it's a pity <laughs> it really is a pity because it's just it's so minimal it is so minimal that it, it would have been very easy to do very very easy to do um technically uh it's it's fine it, it doesn't have uh you know sound stage it's it's wide enough it's got good good width good height good depth good imaging good detailed retrieval resolution <coughs> excuse me all that is is fine and it's very good for the price um but when you for example compare it to the as24 the as24 is superior the AS24, well, by, by sheer well, the fact that it's got more DBAs to help do it, its job, it's also obviously a, a factor. But it's just better. There's more of everything here. And more, you know, every, and over here, it's 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 very good. It's very good. Just it not on the same level as on the AS24. In terms of uh, of timbre and tonality, which is that that uh, aspect which I always pay attention to, um, it's very much music dependent. There will be songs where it's it's really well done there will be other songs where um it, it's just off a little bit but uh, you know f overall nothing that is offensive or nothing that i can say oh no it's it's really badly done and i didn't really enjoy it and no no um let me see here um uh, for example la belle dame saint remorse from chris botty uh, one of the songs i really enjoyed listening to it over here very nice House of Groove from Eugene Groove, on the other hand, it's fine, but it, it, the VZ just lacked that uh, impact of the mid bass that you know that you get, for example, here that you get on the AS24, that you get on the HM20. Uh, over this, just I'm not even going to talk about that and that because you know that you get on the Kara, uh, it, it just lacked a, a little bit. Um, let me see another one, Elephant from Carol Dubok, which is a song that I usually use a lot. Very nice. Very nice. I really cannot complain. What, what, where I complain here ever so slightly is in the, the tonality of it just loses a little bit of warmth. That's all. Moon River from Jacinta, which is a, a, a nice a nice song to, to kind of showcase a female, female vocal. Nice. Very nice. Very well executed. It just... Um, I don't know. There's a little bit... There's something there about the tonality. That is not a hundred percent, but again, that's that's me just being really nitpicky and and you know trying to falter. No, that's not. The, it, it's it is for the. It's fine. From dust to dawn, from George Duke, it was it, it was good. Uh, you know the the bass impact, everything was fine. Little fuge in G minor from Jacques Lassois, and perfect as well. Really, nothing to be to be said again, again in that song. Um, Mexican Margarita from Jay Gurevich. Nice execution. The guitars just sound uh, a little bit off as compared, to, for example, to the AS24. I like I like uh, Mexican Margarita's uh, execution more on the AS24 and on the uh, on the the DFI. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Compared yeah then to the to the three non KZ brand ones, um, as I said, I was actually surprised at how. Um, you know the blessing is very clinical. It's very, um, it's very, everything's very squeaky clean, and so on, uh, and that also means that sometimes it loses a little bit of life. And in that aspect, the the, the VZ is very similar. Um, there are some songs, uh, feels good from Rashan Patterson. They sound amazing on both of them. I really was kind of like, hmm, which one do I prefer? Um, you know, as <laughs> simple as that. High stepping from Larry Carlton. The, the the blessing it just does it better it's just it's cleaner um, what I'm saying about the blessing is basically the same thing that happens with the car when I compare the car the, uh, the difference here is the car has the bass to match everything nicely more more more, more coherently as opposed to the blessing uh, and so it just sounds overall nice uh, it, it's it's a fuller it's a more it's a more solid sounding I am however still having said that there were songs where you know they traded blows. They traded blows nicely. You know, it was it was interesting to see how the VZ was actually. I mean, even a song from Pete Belasco like "Deeper," which has got a nice deep bass and it's got you know a nice bass line. Yes, it doesn't. It can't keep up with the cara, but up to a certain volume, you know, it was it was fine. It was actually I was quite surprising. Compared there to the to the EPZ, uh, the K five. Um, the K5 overall, well, 
let me just repeat one thing I said earlier. The K5 needs you to give it a little bit of power for it to come alive. When it comes alive, in my opinion, it's superior to the VZ. When it comes alive. But under more normal listening conditions, where the VZ's little handicap there in that 4, 5, 6K area is not noticeable, then the VZ is a better IM. Okay, it's better. Uh, it's more balanced. It's more, it's, it sounds more, more like a, a serious uh, IEM, while that one just sounds very bland. Obviously, like I just said, when you increase the volume, then it changes, that, that changes, uh, you know, its, it's, its position. That then shows that it's, it's a very capable IEM. Uh, is the difference or are the differences huge? No, they're not huge. They're, you know, that, that's, let, let's, let's be truthful. They're not huge. Um, so, I mean, overall, what, what can I just in, in conclusion say about the VZ? The VZ is a nice IEM. It is a really nice IEM, uh, way better than the than its um, than its uh, uh, older sibling, the the, the, the Shine. Um, as compared to other offerings from KZ, um, it is um, for me not as good as the AS24. For me personally, I think the AS24 is still a better IEM. Uh, as compared to the to the DFI. Uh, it is a little bit more technically capable than the, the, the DFI, although it's not even fair to compare because one is a single DD and one is a, is a you know is a is a hybrid. And again, I, here we actually see the opposite. We see this is actually able to keep up with that much more times than this just outright beats it. Let's put it that way. Okay, uh, compared to the ZAR, it is a better AI than the ZAR because of that crazy amount of bass that it has. It's definitely a better IEM than the than the Shine, and compared to the HM20, and I know this is gonna this is gonna sound crazy, but I still think honestly, I still honestly prefer the sound of the HM20. I don't know what it is, honestly, I just don't know what it is. But the HM20 just sounds so so good in my ears. It it sounds so good. It, it is. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, just, you know, I, I like this. You know the fact it's got this minute shell. I mean, just I mean, let's let's put this into context. This is the same side. This is the same side. Okay, right side. Look at the difference in size. One is a one plus seven. The other one is a one plus four. Okay, fair enough. You got the crossover network and everything. But you know, I'm trying to see. There we go. Look at the size difference. You know. Um, I wonder, I honestly wonder, and this is also 3D printed with ducts and everything, and I wonder if they had been able to make the VZ slightly smaller and thus friendlier to, to fit in the ear uh, with that uh, deeper insertion that I was mentioning, I wonder what we, have, what, what we could have. I really do, because the potential of the VZ is definitely there. It is definitely there, you know. Uh, Let's forget now past issues with KZ. Let's be honest about what they're giving us now. And what they're giving us now, they are giving us some really, really good IMs. The DFI is a phenomenal single DD. The S24, phenomenal OBA. The PR1 Pro or the PR2, whichever your flavor is, phenomenal planar. And this, the, the VZ, is a phenomenal hybrid. That's the reality. Let's, you know, let's, let's call things by their name. They are giving some seriously good IMs. All right. Anyway, guys, I'll show you the graphs now, and uh, we'll wrap it up. All right, you take care. Hi, guys, and uh, welcome now to the graph section for the VZ10. Uh, these are basically the four settings that uh, make uh, sense. Uh, okay, let me just take away a few here so we can understand. The first one that I'm showing you is the setting where all the switches are in on position. So you have the, the, the 2 dB overall boost, plus then the bass all boosted, and then the mids also boosted, the highs, everything. So that's the, the full the full Kahoot. And you can see everything is uh, skewed so that definitely that whole area there of upper mids and treble is emphasized. And this definitely does make it sound just too thin, too... To to um, it's just too it, it, well not too thin is not the the best word probably but it just sounds uh, uh, lacking in in having a little extra base there to just compensate things that's that's what it is uh, it, too thin is perhaps not the ideal word for this the next setting is um, the setting where 
um, you still have that uh, that um, uh, base uh, uh, overall base uh, uh, overall uh, uh, boost of, of the frequencies plus the bass and then you have the mids uh, emphasized and no emphasis on the treble and you can, you can definitely see the difference yeah it's it's, it's plain to see um, the next one is the setting where the overall uh, bass uh, overall sorry not the overall bass the overall boost is taken away um, and uh, you, you have no boost of the mids or the or the treble and you can definitely see that everything has come down uh, you know it's, however for some reason which i cannot explain you, you, it gains bass i don't know why this happens but look it is what it is and then finally the setting that i used which was the setting where um, uh, i don't have that overall boost given uh, i have the bass uh, boost uh, uh, activated and then I have just uh, a little bit of, of a treble boost uh, activated as well and if you can see here between no treble and a little bit of treble boost you can see the difference so this is actually the setting that I preferred and the one that for me just made the most sense overall okay that's it all right let's get straight into the rest of the comparisons yeah the first one I'm going to show you is the comparison with the um, Sorry, there we go. First one I'm going to show you is the comparison with the, the, the CCA, the HN20. Um, everything is normalized at 500 hertz, so that you guys know. And you can see straight away why the HN20 just sounds so good because the way that the mids are done, it's it, the, you know, the mids, upper mids, and, and treble, it's very well done. Um, I didn't find it to be recessed like some people said that they found the mids to be recessed and so no and the bass although it looks like it's an enormous amount it's a seven millimeter so don't forget that but what it has extra here compared to the VZ does just make it sound that extra little bit fuller okay very a, a very very nicely tuned I am and it plays just amazing I, I really enjoy it okay the next one I'm gonna show you now is the um, shine in the setting which makes sense which is the um, let me just change the color here so that we can see it better which is the rock and R&B uh, setting so it's uh, the 1001 setting and um, you know you look at it like that straight away and you think oh, okay they, they look similar they they'll get... and for some reason <clears throat> the, the the shine sounds thin in the bass <clears throat> it doesn't although it seems like it's got the same kind of bass it just sounds thin in the bass however I will give the shine uh, a better execution of the mids and upper mids and treble I will give it that uh, although <clears throat> you know when you compare one and the other um, I, I end up preferring the, the VZ uh, even with, even though it's got that little extra energy there that's not um, the, the ideal I prefer it uh, over the, the, the I prefer it over the, the, the shine okay so that's the shine out of the way next one now here is the ZAR the KZ uh, the ZAR uh, mids upper mids and treble again I think very well done very very well done just excessive amounts of bass especially because it's a 10 millimeter driver and it just overpowers the same doesn't let this whole area here shine in, in the way that it, it could okay next one uh, Moondrop Blessing 2 um, bass uh, almost identical as you can see although for some reason I get the perception that the bass of the VZ sounds a little bit extra fuller at times um, and kind of you know the blessing is very detailed very very technical uh, but can sound cold uh, and uh, uh, perhaps the the main culprit is the bass and the bass on on the on the VZ although it's not it's uh, you know uh, main uh, Forte, it's still it's it's still got that little extra warmth to it. It just sounds more pleasant. Um, next one is the DFI uh, in the one 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 zero setting, and the DFI um, okay graphically wise as you can see it seems like it's got the same kind of bass but it, there's no comparison. Uh, there's absolutely no comparison. And then the mids and the highs. Um, or better done or, or more well done there's no harshness no aggressiveness they just lose in the detail that the, the VZ has but you know uh, it, it, it's quite interesting to see how the, the, the DFI actually uh, is capable of trading blows very very well and actually if you change the tip on the DFI which I'm going to show you now if you play around with the tips on the DFI if you put for example uh, yes this one here if you have a wide board tip on the DFI um, 
it it's 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 you can see there it, it's it's really good it's it plays really good although it seems like it's become a overly uh, bright then no it, it sounds really really good because it's got the bass to match okay so that's that out of the way as well um next one kzas 24 um as 24 i just i just think it's an absolute beast of an im honestly uh yes you do notice that it's got a little bit more of mid bass impact definitely noticeable the, it's just the timbre uh, of the bass of the um uh, vz which is a little bit more well it's dd it's not it's better it's it's dd uh, the rest i prefer everything on the as it's just it's it's nice it's more well done more balanced everything just makes a better match um, it sounds honestly the AS24 sounds phenomenal. Now having said that as well, it's not like it's a it's a it's a complete bloodbath over the over the the VZ. No, the VZ for the VZ to be on the same level of the AS24, they would just need to do away with this peak here. That's all. Just do away with this peak. Just make this area between three and seven kilohertz a little bit more sloping on the way down, and give it just a little extra bass, just a smidge extra bass on one of the settings. Have a setting like that. And it would be perfect okay uh, next one next one next one next one uh, no s uh, epz um, just balance it out here there we go epz um, very similar as you can see actually very very similar um, the epz doesn't have as much ultimate sub bass but the mid bass impact that it has is way more uh, you know more more noticeable than than on the vz and this execution here of the mids and upper mids is better in my opinion um but you know they they kind of trade blows as well with each with one another they 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 they, they trade blows with one another it's not like an outright winner there or no. technically yes the the vz is better uh, fun factor, I would probably give it to the K5. Um, and I believe that's it. That's it. Anyway, guys, um, like I said, it's a nice IM. Just needed a little extra more attention here and it would have been perfect. All right. Anyway, as usual, like and subscribe. Any questions you might have, please feel free to ask. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.